Mark and Trina invite you to experience a conference like no other, Supernatural Leadership Conference. We have a power-packed lineup of speakers, Mac and Lynn Hammond, David and Vicki Sheeran, Dr. Avery Jackson, Joel Sims, and Pastors George and Terry Pearson. This is a life-changing event you won't want to miss. Join us March 8th through the 11th and take your leadership to a new supernatural level. Register today at markhankins.org and join us March 8th through the 11th. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21, is a, is a, there's a phrase in there that has just been uh, going over and over and over and over and over and over. And so we want to look at this in Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. It says, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. That's what I want you to underline right there. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Look at verse 21. That he makes you perfect. Wow, that sounds pretty good, don't it? Makes you perfect in every good work to do his will. And he's working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, he makes you perfect. I believe he gets you in the right place at the right time with the right people. Amen. He makes you perfect, not just the permissive will of God, but the perfect will of God for your life. Amen. And then he says, and he works in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. I think it's the Amplified Bible says that he equips you with everything you need to do his will. All right, let's try that again. He equips you with everything you need to do his will. Let's try that again. Come on, quit acting like you don't have it and you can't get it. Come on, make a bold confession that he equips me with everything I need to do his will. Now laugh at the devil for a minute. Say, ha, ha, ha. So somebody say, how did you get there? You say, well, God raised Jesus from the dead and through the blood of the everlasting covenant, God is working in me that which is well-pleasing. Come on, other people may have already given up on you, but God never gives up on you. He sees you through the blood. And actually the two words in Christ is simply a blood covenant terminology. There's 130 in Christ scriptures and those two words our blood covenant terminology, your identification with Christ. Anytime there is a blood covenant, it changes the identity of the individual. In other words, with Abraham, God became the God of Abraham. Abraham became known as the friend of God. But if you know Hebrew, God actually put his name in the middle of Abraham. So every time you meet Abraham, he goes, I'm, I'm not just me, it's me and God. Amen. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And so um, a good friend of mine said something at one of our conferences, you know, and his name is Pastor Mac Hammond. Now, I like Mac Hammond. He, he has actually the same initials for his ministry as I do. And so I tell him to send the money on over. But his is MHM Mac Hammond Ministries, and I'm Mark Hankins Ministry. So he's speaking at one of our leadership conferences, and Mac, Mac said this. He's going through a particular challenge. And the Lord asked him this question. The Lord said, aren't you even going to act like you've got a covenant with God? All right, let's try this side over. He said, 
I just want to know when you're going to act like you got a covenant with God. Let's try that one more time. I said, I just like to know when you're going to act like you got a covenant with God. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes the simplest definition of faith is simply to act like you got a covenant with God. Amen. I'm going to act like God is on my side. So the Lord gave Trina those, those, we call it fighting words many years ago when we were going through a challenge that God is on my side for the blood has been applied. Every need shall be supplied and nothing shall be denied. So I enter into rest and I know I am blessed. I have passed the test and I will get God's best. Hallelujah. When are you going to act like you got a covenant with God? And so the confession of our faith would include the confession of our blood covenant, our covenant with God through the blood of Jesus. And so that's a part of our faith is declaring what the blood of Jesus has done for us, what it does in us. And you know, faith always comes before feelings. <laughs> in other words, no matter how you feel or no matter how things look, actually when David ran at Goliath, he was just talking about the covenant, yes. the blood covenant. That's how he knew he was going to win. Yeah. Amen. So the blood covenant, to understand the covenant that you have with God. And so I started studying on the blood of Jesus a lot more, even though I grew up in church. My dad's a pastor, went to Sunday school, heard many sermons on the blood, and actually was in an airport years ago. And, and Trina picked out a book on the blood uh, by uh, Andrew Murray. So <laughs> she had the audacity to tell me that I needed that book. I said, are you talking to me? I didn't really say that, but it did go through my mind. <laughs> that she said, we need to get this book. I said, <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what, you get the book, underline the best parts, and then read it to me. <laughs> so she got the book first. You know, Dad Hagen said, many men would never make it if they didn't have a good wife. Look around, there's many evidences here today. Many of us would never make it if we didn't have a good wife. And so Trina got the book, you know, and she went through the book and started reading. But I was thinking, I'm raised in church, I know about the blood. You can't tell me nothing about the blood. But it's amazing what you can learn if you would uh, re-examine some things. Amen? Just some real simple things, you know. Um, like Vince Lombardi, when his team had lost every game, I think one year, and the next year he got his t players together and he said, he got a football and he said, now this is a football. <laughs> In other words, he said, we're going to return to the fundamentals just to make sure you know <laughs> this is a football now, guys. And so a lot of times studying the fundamentals will produce fresh revelation. So I went back and just started studying it and learned a lot from Andrew Murray's book on uh, the precious blood of Jesus or the power of the blood of Christ, I think it is. And I have my favorite quotes in the book, The Bloodline of a Champion. Uh, but learned so much studying on the blood, but yet when I grew up, my mom and dad, they preached on the blood. We sing about the blood. And then my mama would do what I call slinging blood everywhere. You know what I mean? She was always, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. It had many purposes and many usages. In other words, if a fear or something came to her mind, I plead the blood of Jesus. If we're going on a trip, I plead the blood of Jesus. Matter of fact, I'm probably standing here today because my mama kept slinging blood everywhere. <laughs> my daddy said, we know you didn't get here by being careful. <laughs> it's the blood, amen. And then I heard Dad Hagen say something about it. He said around the Baptist and he came over among the Pentecostals or spirit-filled people. And he said he got over there and he heard them saying something like this. They would say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. So he said, I didn't really understand everything they're talking about. He says, but I started doing it anyway. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. 
He said, it worked so well for me. He said, I still do it today. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. Amen. And so when you plead the blood, well, that's an Old Testament terminology, but it's synonymous with the New Testament phrase, faith in the blood. It means the same thing. Plead is simply a legal term. How do you plead? What you're saying is, I rest my case. Let's see if some of y'all could rest your case. In other words, I rest my case on the blood of Jesus. I rest my case on the blood of Jesus. Let's try it again. I rest my case on the blood of Jesus. Then Andrew Murray said it this way. To enjoy this blessing, nothing is necessary except faith in the blood of Jesus. He said, his blood alone has done everything. All right, let's try it again. To enjoy this blessing, amen, I call it blood blessed. Amen. To enjoy this blessing, nothing is necessary except faith in the blood of Jesus. His blood alone has done everything. I like to say it this way, his blood plus nothing, minus nothing. I rest my case. And then Dad Hagen said this in one of his messages. He said he was praying uh, for the healing line one time, and there was a lady while he's going down the line to pray for him, and one of the ladies, uh, uh, he heard her say before he laid hands on her, she said, Lord, you know I ought to be healed. I'm the best Christian in this church. <laughs> he said, I couldn't believe my ears. He said, we had to actually change our healing line and start singing, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. In other words, he said, it don't matter whether you've been saved one year or 50 years. It don't matter whether you're the best Christian or the worst Christian. You're still going to have to come by the blood. The blood alone has done everything. So you're not coming up there thinking about what you did or what you didn't do. You just say, I want to tell you what Jesus did. By his blood, his blood alone has done everything. I rest my case on his blood. So look at Romans chapter 3, verse 25, and that's where we get the phrase, through faith in his blood, through faith in his blood. And then I'll read you another quote. And I know sometimes people say, well, you know, I've heard this message before, but I always say, Dad Hagen set me free from the fear of repetition. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I've listened to him for, I still listen to him almost every day. Amen. One of my favorite ones is his, his, and we'll get to that in a second, is on the four kinds of confession. That's one of my favorite messages from Dad Hagen. I listen to it almost every day. I'm not going to be like that preacher that said, uh, I've listened to that message millions of times. He said, and my biggest sin is a sin of exaggeration. He said, and I've cried an ocean full of tears over that. All right, so let's keep going now. Go to Romans 3.25. <laughs> Romans 3.25. And so in that message on confession, he talks about the confession of your faith and um, the confession of your faith in the Word of God, and the blood of Jesus. And so Andrew Murray said something like this. He said, we honor the blood by boldly confessing that it cleanses us from all sin. In other words, if you want to honor the work of Jesus, you honor the blood by boldly confessing that it cleanses us from all sin, all unrighteousness. Again, Smith Wigglesworth said, there is not one thing in me the blood does not cleanse. All right, let's try that one more time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is not one thing in you the blood does not cleanse. Hallelujah. So my mama would do, I plead the blood. We call it slinging blood everywhere because when they came to worship, you know, they would sprinkle blood on everything. So if you were going to worship God, you would become blood conscious. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
So look at Romans 3.25 where we get the phrase where he says, through faith in his blood, through faith in his blood. So if you're going to live by faith, I said, if you're going to live by faith, you're going to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to walk by faith, not by sight. Then you have to know something about the blood. So here he says, through faith in his blood, he says, verse 25, talking about what Jesus has done, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the patience of the forbearance of God through faith in his blood. Verse 26, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that God himself, he is just, and he is also the justifier of whoever believes in Jesus. Verse 27, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. So he says faith is a spiritual law that accesses the kingdom of God. It's a spiritual law. He calls it a law of faith, works the same all the time, works the same everywhere. When you know the main ingredients in it, let me read Andrew Murray's quote real quickly here. And here's what Andrew Murray said, very excellent quote, can't do no better than this, so I'll just read it to you. He says, faith is largely dependent on knowledge. Now, how many of y'all know that, right? Because faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. I like to throw in one more word. Faith comes by hearing and by remembering the word you heard. That's why hearing and hearing, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Amen. And so Andrew Murray said, faith is largely dependent upon what? Knowledge. That's why every advance in faith will come from a breakthrough in revelation knowledge. Praise the Lord. Come on, when the, I like to say this information will change a nation. In other words, the devil is so scared of this information that any nation that tries to control people will try to keep this information out of their hands. Because the moment this revelation or information gets in the hands of people, it brings freedom, it brings deliverance, it brings healing, it brings victory. Matter of fact, your picture goes up at the post office in hell the moment you know what the blood of Jesus has done. Hallelujah. Come on, you're walking around town. You're a dangerous person because you're carrying the blood of Jesus and faith in that blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul said, I even attracted a lot of uh, uh, negative attention <laughs> because of the abundance of revelation. <laughs> Woo! Come on, when you go get home, when you get into town, the devil will know what street you came in on because you're the one person that he cannot dominate. Right. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right, let me get back to reading this. Praise the Lord. You'll have a shout and spell in just a minute. Faith is largely dependent upon knowledge. If knowledge of what the blood can or has accomplished is not accurate. Come on, because we're going just from general knowledge to what? Accurate revelation knowledge of the blood covenant. So he says, if your, if your knowledge is not accurate, then your faith expects little. Come on, so if, you, if you're limited in your revelation knowledge, then your faith has a low expectation. And so you're kind of entering in, getting the minimum of what really belongs to you. So he says, if, you're, if your faith is not, your knowledge is not accurate, then your faith expects little, and the more powerful effects of the blood then would be limited. Feeble ideas of its power prevent the deeper and more perfect manifestations of its effects. Feeble ideas. In other words, sometimes people say, well, I know about the blood. You're kind of like me. I know about the blood. I'm talking about the blood. What are you talking about, man? I was raised in church. But I just had, you know, just a little bit of information. Sometimes it's pretty dangerous. You know, like, I just know a little bit. And you say, actually, that's the truth. You do just know a little bit. So, so he said, you could have a breakthrough in understanding. 
And so he says, here's the way Andrew Murray said it, as we find out what the scriptures teach about the blood, we will see that faith in the blood can produce greater results in us than we have ever known. Wait, 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 one more sentence. And in the future, a ceaseless blessing may be ours. Come on, we're talking about being blessed coming in and blessed going out, being the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Come on, the blessing of the Lord. It says when they came out of Israel, they put the blood on the doorpost. It says they came out with what? Silver and gold came out with joy. Are y'all still here? And they were healthy, no sick ones in the middle of them. Come on, none of them sick. But I got one more for you. And he gave them the land of the heathen. Come on, that means some of y'all. Are lined up for some land and some property and some buildings because of the blood. Woo! The blood. The blood. The blood. Woo! All right, let's go over one more time. As we find out what the scriptures teach about the blood. We will see that faith in the blood can produce greater results in us. Amen. Come on, sometimes people say, well, yeah, I, I have tried everything. <laughs> All right, let's finish reading this again. <laughs> I think it was Daryl that said this the other night. I thought it was so good and I'd forgotten. But, but Dad Hagen said he went over those healing scriptures and he said, I could quote them all, but I went ahead and stopped and looked at them and read them. Are y'all serious? Sometimes you need to stop and look at it and read it again, amen, even though you can quote some of it. Amen. So as we find out what the scriptures teach about the blood, we see faith in the blood can produce greater results in us. Listen now, not just for us, but also in us. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. And in the future, a ceaseless blessing may be ours. I'm redeemed by the blood, washed in the blood. Amen. We honor the blood by what? Boldly confessing that it cleanses us. Hallelujah. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. Do you want to live an overcoming life? Do you want to have more confidence in your prayer life? The blood of Jesus causes us to overcome in every situation, and it gives us great boldness to come to the Father. In the new four CD series, The Blood Covenant, Pastor Mark Hankins teaches how we have a better covenant based on better promises. Our covenant is secured by the precious blood of Jesus. At the cross, God made a covenant with every believer. We no longer have to stand at a distance from God, but can come boldly into His presence by the blood of Jesus. Along with this new CD set, you'll get the book, The Bloodline of a Champion. Mark Hankins explains the power of the blood of Jesus. This book has a brand new chapter about his grandson Dylan and how he overcame leukemia and a bone marrow transplant. There is overcoming power in the blood of Jesus. By faith, we're now part of a new bloodline, the bloodline of a champion. Order the special package today. Your gift of any amount will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today while my parents have been talking about the bloodline of a champion. And we will send you the bloodline of a champion book for your gift of any amount. This book, if you've never read this book, this book is amazing and it's easy to read. It's a power, powerful, powerful message, but it's also very easy to read. And it's exciting because you're finding out everything that you have because of the blood of Jesus. We wanna make sure this book gets to you. So for your gift of any amount, we will send you this book. Because of your partnership with Mark Hankins Ministries, my parents are able to continue going and preaching and teaching all over the world. It is their honor, it is their dream, it is their, their life's goal to continue to preach and teach all over the world. So because of your partnership, you help to send them 
from place to place to place. And it is such a blessing to them and to this ministry. Also, because of your generous, generous donations, my parents have been able to translate the books into many, many languages. It's actually their vision and their heart to translate the books into 100 translations, 100 languages. So that will make a huge impact all over the world. And because of you, we are able to do that a little bit at a time. And we're so thankful to you. Thank you so much for believing and partnering with this ministry and with this vision and with this goal. We're so very thankful. Thank you so much. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. Mark and Trina invite you to experience a conference like no other, Supernatural Leadership Conference. We have a power packed lineup of speakers, Mac and Lynn Hammond, David and Vicki Sheeran, Dr. Avery Jackson, Joel Sims, and pastors George and Terry Pearson. This is a life-changing event you won't want to miss. Join us March 8th through the 11th and take your leadership to a new supernatural level. Register today at markhankins.org and join us March 8th through the 11th. Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org.